you know, did you did you see Sari when she was in Japan and like matches against like Chichiro Hashimoto and, and women like that? It just it was a dicey proposition with her coming over to the States anyway, you know, being, you know, in Mako Satomura's vein. But I honestly thought that. One, I thought Mako was going to come over here, and I thought that would make sense as to why she would be here as opposed to going to UK and them going together to UK. But, you know, she comes over here, and it's like it was obvious in a lot of ways. It was a square peg, round hole. It felt like that. But it's like, okay, well, maybe we can get something out of this, you know, because she does have, you know, a look. And she, you know, there are benefits to, I think, Saray cosmetically and work-wise being in WWE. But... You know, the more the changes have happened, you know, she's kind of gotten shuffled around. And I don't know, especially after you know, when you're watching stardom, you know, we were watching that. It, it, you know, I don't know how long she's going to be there, but and I, you don't have to be a pundit on this. But like, what do you think about Saray in NXT and in this 2.0 universe that we have now? Does she even fit there or would you actually send her to UK at the first available opportunity and go, Okay, Kaylee Ray and Mako and so and with some of the women, B Priestley, who you know, some of the people that are over there, maybe she's better off with. I mean, am I making the decisions? Yeah, then I'm gonna put her with uh people that she's gonna have the best matches with. And uh that's probably not in the role that she's in, you know, right now. I think one of the things about developmental too is that you want to prepare these upcoming wrestlers for what they're gonna face on the main roster. And I mean, is Lash Legend really going to face another Saray on the main roster? I mean, they where's Asuka? You know what I mean? It seems as if they've yeah. even moved away from that style of wrestler uh, on the main roster. There's no... Are there any Japanese females up there now? I mean, besides no, Asuka? Asuka no. being off, that's it. And, and if you look at what they're doing with, with Mandy Rose and you look at what they're doing with... Uh, uh, toxic attraction if this is the idea of what they want to do which is obviously downplaying the physical wrestling as opposed to the, some of the gaga and the look of how you do how you do that wrestling you know it, it's it's not it doesn't feel very good you know it always amazed me that john morrison was not like to me he was the perfect guy to go to nxt and be a bridge for a lot of those people i think oscar's the same way but now she's just disappeared completely, and it's like, yeah, I mean, if that's what they want on the main roster, then, yeah, there really is no place for Saray there, it doesn't feel like. Uh, and one of the things that they actually talked about it, Nigel McGuinness talked about it on commentary during that match, was that when Saray arrived, she was hot. She was on a win streak, and now she's kind of just fallen by the wayside. And, you know, you would think that in this if I was booking this and you're trying to uh, elevate Lash Legend, clearly they have some sort of future plans for her or did, you would be giving her the win here, not somebody who you're portraying on commentary as, you know, being on a losing streak. And then after the match, Legend lays her out anyways. She goes, hey, you know what? You interrupted me, but you're so darn cute. That, that was actually what she said. She said, you're so darn cute, but then... I'm going to make you pay for lashing out or whatever she said. So I really don't understand what they're going with here for. So I don't know. The opposite going of the for hook debut. Yeah. So the opposite of the hook debut with, with lash legend. Did you ever watch Showtime at the Apollo? Did you ever watch that? No. You have amateur night and see the amateur night would happen and somebody would come out there. They'd be terrible. And they bring out the Sandman, and the Sandman had a big hook, and he'd come out there and he'd start pulling them away, and it's like the anti-hook. It's like the Sandman's hook. That's what Lash Legend, that's what she had going on. <laughs> and it's not her fault. As you mentioned, your, their job is to supposed to bring these folks or, or, you know, along in the best way possible, and I don't know if featuring her matches right now is the best way possible. It is Wrestling Observer Live today. I'm Oreo the Orca. Do you have a blowhole rating system? Like, if you're really excited about a match, it gives you yeah, this, six squirts. This match was was uh, two and three quarter holes, if you must know. So I was watching this show, and they had a bunch of videos for this Liv Morgan about how, oh, my whole life I've been a wrestling fan. Oh, I'm going to win my first title ever. There's children cheering and going, oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I do indeed. <laughs> hey, Danhausen, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear Danhausen? Hey! Look at that holy hey. mother of God. Look what we've done here. You broke a leg. Is that true? Uh, it was broken in half, snapped in two. The doctor said it was a tibia and a fibia. 
Uh, I'm a whale and not a doctor, but is it not a fibula and not a fibia? A fibula? What I know. Perhaps what? the doctor lied to Dan Housen. You know, Dan Housen, if you were a whale, you wouldn't have broken your leg. This is true because whales don't have legs. What did you grow up watching as a little evil man? Kane ripping off the door when he debuted. Yes. How old were you, Dan Housen, when that match took place? Oh, about, uh, what was that, 1997, so about 700 years old. Oh. Also, one time Dan Housen had Dolph Ziggler's theme song as his alarm, and it went off in class. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes, it's true. Dan Housen likes Dolph Ziggler. You like Dolph Ziggler? He's good matches. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.